I always wanted to make a one-take short film, but never gotten around to it. So when SmallRig sent me the new wireless follow focus system to review, what better way to test it than on a set of a one-take short film, where every mistake is being punished. So I quickly came up with a script and assembled the crew and cast. Assemble. No! Five days later, here we were, in Bell's parking garage. Camera? Check. Anamorphic lens? Check. Lighting? Check. A foolproof plan? So let's see, what equipment did we use and why, how big was our crew, what challenges did we have to overcome and what went wrong on set of my first one take short film, Forgotten. My name is Eamon Cooper and welcome to how to shoot a short film with little to no planning and still kind of getting away with it. So let's start with the idea and how the whole project came together. As I already briefly mentioned in the intro, Smallrick sent me the new wireless focus pulling kit. And I didn't want to just test it here in the office and have somebody move back and forth and then pass judgment on this new piece of equipment. I wanted to really create something around it. And that's how I got into the idea of the one take short film, because I always wanted to make one of those. But again, I never really had the time or I didn't come up with an idea quick enough. So I wanted this product to be a little bit challenging. So again, on a one take short film, you can't mess up. So once I don't hit the critical focus, we have to shoot everything over again. I also wanted to really have to rack focus from one point to the other. I also wanted to have a little bit of movement in there, but nothing crazy like a chasing scene. And I think we got the right amount to actually test that piece of equipment. So for that movement, we needed space, but it's freezing outside and we also didn't want to be interrupted. So I chose a scene that could be held in a parking garage. I wanted to do it in my parking garage first, but one day before the shoot, I actually realized that there's a huge generator randomly going on and off, and that would completely ruin our audio. So we quickly changed plans and made it in Bell's parking garage. I also wanted to shoot everything at night so that we're not being interrupted and there's not a lot of traffic in that parking garage. So we started around nine with a meeting and then maybe shooting at around 10 p.m. Well, I guess you've seen the film, so it was this ominous setting that the viewer actually thinks that there's a drug deal about to happen or something ominous happening. And then in the end, it just turns out it's a couple where one forgot their lunch and the other one is bringing it to him. But he didn't want to meet him in person because as soon as he hands over the lunch, he starts nagging and bitching about it. And then they just get into it. And that's pretty much the end of it. Pretty simple. I came up with it one afternoon and that was pretty much it. And the whole thing from me planning, from me coming up with the idea to us actually shooting it was probably like five to six days. So there really wasn't a lot of pre-planning or pre-production involved at all. And then you're like really at this point, you're, you just immediately switch like this. Well, I didn't want to come in first. And now the, you know, like. Mm -hmm. And I'm already late for book club. I briefed the crew and cast on what I wanted them to do, but I didn't have any lines written down. So we actually made them up on the and then spot. He says, yeah, I'm here. Where are you? And then, uh, don't worry about it. Just put it on the floor. I was like, I'm not putting it on the floor. I, I want to meet in person. On the day of shooting, and I was really happy with Franco's performance because he improvised almost everything, and I think he did an amazing job. So to summarize, I built a story around the equipment that we had, the location that I had available, also the crew that I had in mind for it, as well as the cast. So this is usually quite backwards because it's supposed to be the other way around, but here it worked. Now let's talk about the equipment. As our camera, we used the Canon C70 because this is the main camera that I use for almost all of my content. And as a lens, we used the Siri 35mm anamorphic lens. I really like the combination because I thought 35mm was the right focal length on the Super 35 sensor with a 1.33 squeeze because that is also equal to around 35 millimeter on a full frame sensor and i think this is the perfect focal length to get enough of the location in but also to get close to the actors to get this intimate ominous feeling that i wanted to portray but also have this final shot where the both of them are standing in there together and again it was a one take so we could only use one lens we put the Canon C70 on a gimbal here because I wanted to have this open pan shot and although everything was supposed to be a little nitty and gritty and dark, so handheld movement would have worked for this, but I think the opening scene alone would have been a little bit too shaky. Usually I would use my Tilta ring setup for this, but since Belle was the camera operator, she wanted to use her own setup. Since she is smaller, it is way more comfortable for her to lift the camera up higher on a one-arm setup instead of a full ring setup. 
We also added a one quarter mist filter to take a bit of that digital sharpness away. In order to be able to pull the focus wirelessly, which was also my job aside from directing, we used the feel world combination of 5.5 inch monitors, FT6 and FR6, and they have a wireless feed built in, so they're actually perfect for focus pulling. And I have a full review about them on my channel already, so maybe check this one out later. We mounted one to the camera for Bell to see, and the other one was on a tripod around the corner where I was pulling focus manually. As for the equipment we used to actually pull the focus, as I already mentioned, we used a small rig follow focus. And this has worked very well for me, and if you want to see the full review, make sure to subscribe because I will be dropping this, I believe, next week. I did mess up focus one time, but that was entirely my fault and not the fault of the equipment, because I also had to give Joao the sign to actually move in onto the shot because he was around the corner and he couldn't see anything. But at the same time, Bell was moving backwards, so I had to pull focus, but I totally forgot because I was so concentrated on giving him the sign so the shot is out of focus for about a second or two. As for lighting the short film we almost exclusively used the available light that we had in the parking garage. The only light that we used as a key light to illuminate Franco's face was the June F100 and we had it on a boom pole with a diffusion and we just held it up close to his face and when we did the pan to the left and the right they actually had to duck down immediately so that we didn't see them in the shot and as soon as she was panning backwards then she was holding up the light again and that just illuminated his face well enough and we tried to mimic the fluorescent lights on the ceiling but we didn't really have enough space especially with the one take to just put up some elaborate lighting and since i wanted to have an overall dark feel anyway i think that turned out pretty well and there's also a full review coming about this light too. So the last piece of equipment we need to talk about is our audio. Since it was a one take, I decided to go with lav mics instead of a boom operator because A, that is just another point of failure and B, it would have been way harder with the lighting and the moving around of the camera. My lav mics of choice are always the Tentacle Trick East. They have 32-bit float receivers and we don't have to worry about any kind of interference and you can easily sync them up via timecode with our Canon C70. We hid them under the actor's shirts with an Ursa chest strap and this is also my favorite way to hide labs because it's really easy to do and you also fight a lot of the rustling noises. And if you're interested, I will link all the equipment that we use down in the description below. Now let's move on to the post-production side of things and obviously there's not too much to talk about when it comes to cutting because, well, there were no cuts. It was a true one take with no hidden cuts and just start to finish one single take. When it came to the color grading, it was also equally as simple to be honest. I used my conversion LUT to get it back to Rec 709 color space. I did a basic color correction to add a bit of contrast and to level out the exposure. And afterwards, I just threw one of our custom LUTs on top. And the one that I used for this one was brown sugar from our version two pack, I believe. And this gave the whole clip the right cinematic feeling and also the right contrast levels and colors. But I wanted to make it look even more filmic, so I added a film grain plugin, and the one that I used is called Film Convert. And here I added film grain as well as a film stock preset. And if you're interested in how I color grade C70 footage in general, then check out the video I uploaded two days ago on how I color grade Canon C70 footage. And if you're also interested in our custom LUTs, then there's a link down in the description below. I only added two tracks of music to this short film and both are from Epidemic Sound. And if you want to sign up and get one month for free, then check out the link down in the description below. Because Epidemic Sound is where we get all of our sound effects as well as all of our music. For the first track I wanted to build suspense and I wanted the viewer to feel like something potentially dangerous is about to happen. And right when we were sending over the package, I just searched for some happy quirky music and that kind of de-escalated the entire situation. And music is so crucial to how you feel when watching a short film like this. So here's a part of the scene without any music at all. Did you get the package? Of course I got the package. Are you coming or what? Leave it on the floor and I'll go and pick it up. And now the same clip with music. Did you get the package? Of course I got the package. Are you coming or what? Leave it on the floor and I'll go and pick it up. As for the sound design, I really didn't have to do much. I mostly used the sound from the lavalier. Everything for the beginning scene and the car was just straight up audio that we recorded on set. The only things I added in post was the dialing signal when he called him and the footsteps when he came around the corner. 
for everything that our second actor said on set. I didn't really like it too much, so I had him record another voice over afterwards and send it to me via his phone. And that was so much better, so I just dropped it in at the right time and I also edited the audio so that it sounded like it came through a phone. Leave it on the floor and I'll go and pick it up. Leave it on the floor and I'll go and pick it up. Speaking of editing the audio, I just tried to enhance the audio a little bit via my usual techniques when I edit voiceovers, but I also had to get rid of the echo because it was really echoey in this garage and it was just a bit too much. Of course I got the package. Are you coming or what? Of course I got the package. Are you coming or what? And I did this via a plugin in Final Cut Pro 10 that actually uses AI. The last thing I had to do is I wanted to get rid of a bit of that rustling from the lavalier microphones that we hit and I also have an AI tool to deal with that. The last thing I added in post-production were the end credit titles and I used a plugin from Motion VFX because I use all my titles from Motion VFX. There's also a link to those in the description below and I think they're called M Title Cinematic. Now let's quickly talk about the crew that we had. We had a crew of four people and a cast of two. I was the one directing as well as pulling focus and Bell was the one operating the camera. Then we had Salo as well as Clelia and both of them switched behind the scenes as well as lighting around and that was basically the entire crew that we needed. And if you've seen in a film, we only needed two actors and that is pretty much self-explanatory. Now let's talk about a couple of the mistakes that we made in our short film. Number one, you might have already noticed. When Franco picked up his phone to call Joao, he didn't actually call him, so we could see his lock screen for about two seconds. And I was thinking about tracking it out and that was just too much hassle. And I just left it in there because that was the best take that we had. I actually noticed this on set on the first or the second take, but unfortunately something else came up and I totally forgot about it again because I had so many things to do at the same time. So yeah, we just left it in there. Lesson learned, I guess. The second mistake we made, I left one of the wireless monitors at home, so I had to drive all the way back to the office, get it, and then come back, but fortunately for me, the office is only 15 minutes away. The last mistake I already mentioned, I didn't pull focus correctly in that one scene, so obviously I would have done this better the next time around, but other than that, that was pretty much it. So if I could change anything in hindsight, what would I change? Number one, I would just direct instead of pull focus and direct at the same time. But obviously I wanted to test a focus pull and I'm the one having to do this. But next time I would get a dedicated focus puller and just concentrate on directing. Another thing I would change the next time is to plan a bit better because here I did hardly any playing in at all. I didn't even write a script, so I had to come up with lines on the spot. Luckily for me, that worked out perfectly because Franco did an amazing job at improvising and helping me with coming along with those lines. But for the next time, planning a bit more. The last thing I would change is I think the pants to the left and the right were a bit too late and a bit too fast for my liking, but that is just a really minor thing. But overall, I was really happy for how it turned out. So this is your sign to just go out and shoot and learn from your mistakes and just go ahead and create. Because I always wanted to create a one take short film and it took me five years to actually do so. And now I'm really happy that I did and I will definitely do more in the near future. Speaking of the very near future, the next big project that took me over a year of filming in 10 different countries is Cutting Edge, my short film documentary that I will release on March 2nd. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to know when I upload it exactly. I hope you liked this behind the scenes of my short film Forgotten and if you did then please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow and since you're already here maybe check out one or two of these videos how I color graded the Canon C70 and the trailer to my upcoming short film Cutting Edge. Hmm.